Okay, so today I'm going to present you the LinkSmart middleware platform, providing the, um, the overview, the introduction of the main concepts and the ideas behind them. Um, it will happen in the, the following way. I'll start in the introduction, provide you the, the motivation, the problems which LinkSmart is trying to address. Um, and then I go through the main subprojects, the pillars on which LinkSmart is built. Um, so let me just start with the motivation. The Internet of Things is here. It's going to stay. Um, more and more devices are being connected. The predictions say um, the number is like 50 billion of devices till 2020. Um, the other predictions say that 80% of those devices will be the systems which are actually already deployed, um, which are already there. They are not internet connected yet, but they are going to. Um, and all of these devices are different. They speak different protocols. Um, there are consumer electronic devices, there are industry devices, um, and the applications that work with the data provided by those devices, applications that interact with those devices, they are also different. Um, we have the desktop applications, which ha we have um, web applications, mobile applications, different form factors, smartphones, tablets, now we get the variables. Um, and all of this heterogeneity, so to say, um, is both in the devices, the protocols, and in the applications. Forward. <laughs> um, so what we have is um, the distributed applications, um, the, the applications which are not running on a single machine anymore, the applications which um, span in the network, they span over the networks, um, they bring the complexities of the distributed systems. Uh, more specifically, they require service discovery. Um, they require communication beyond um, the single private networks. And they bring a lot of complexity with managing the metadata of the IoT devices, services, managing the sensor data, processing it, and so on. Um, so the LinkSmart middleware platform aims at um, alleviating the burden for the application developers trying to make the development of such IoT applications simpler. Um, its main um, sub-projects um, which constitute the LinkSmart middleware is the, the local connect, uh, which focuses on the device integration and service discovery in private networks. Um, the next one is the global connect, which um, extends the local connect environments to global networks. Um, it focuses on the service discovery in this global network and providing the tunneling. Um, of service requests, which I will get to, of course. Um, and last but not least is the LinkSmart services, uh, which uh, provides the middleware services that are the building blocks for the applications um, when it comes to um, building IoT systems and platforms that require sensor data processing and management of the metadata. Um, so I'm going to start with the local connect and then go over the other projects. Um, the local connect, as I mentioned, focuses on the private AP networks, um, on integrating IoT devices, which you can see uh, at the bottom, um, with the device connect or the integration components, which I'll just explain on the next slides. Um, its goal is to enable the applications and services, which you can see here, um, to communicate with these devices. Um, and in addition to that, um, the local connect provides several services as the infrastructure for those application services, uh, which include the resource catalog, the service catalog, um, which I also briefly explain in the next slides. So the first and the, the most essential task when building IoT application is the integration of the IoT devices. Um, so on the left-hand side, we get the IoT devices, uh, which speak different protocol, different protocols. Um, they are low-level protocols. Um, in the industry, we see things like Modbus, um, um, Bear Ethernet. Um, in the consumer electronics, there are new protocols which are popping up uh, in the recent years. Um, and on the right-hand side, we have the applications, which talk high-level protocols, protocols like HTTP, um, MQTT, WebSockets, and so on. So with LinkSmart, uh, we bring bridge the gap between the IoT devices and applications, allowing the, allowing the applications to get access to the resources of the IoT devices by integration components, which we call the device connectors. Now, the device connectors are 
um, device or system and protocol specific. Um, and they are um, integrating different kinds of devices. So on the one hand, we have the uh, consumer IoT devices, which I already mentioned, with their own set of protocols. Um, then we have the industrial Internet of Things devices with their own protocols and their own kinds of devices like PLCs and uh, wireless sensor networks. Um, so the device connectors um, abstract different kinds of devices, both consumer electronics and industrial IoT devices, um, using the device and resource model. Um, the device and resource model is rather basic. There are two kinds of entities. There are devices which are um, considered as the hosts of the resources, and the resources are modeled um, based on the Web of Things um, idea, where um, every resource has a state, and the state can be either obtained or it can be uh, manipulated. So you can think about it as a sensor node, which has several sensors and an actuator on it, say um, a temperature sensor, barometer sensor, and the power switch. Um, so the sensor node itself will be a device, and the individual sensors and the actuator will be the resources. So you can update the value of a temperature sensor, or you can change the state of the switch. So the device connectors are the ones which are operating with these abstractions. They are actually the components that create this abstraction and populate it in the network. Um, the device connector itself is not a single software component. Um, it is a specification uh, with functional requirements which need to be implemented by the device connectors. Um, and these um, functional requirements basically include three main parts. Um, the first one is um, providing this modeling abstraction that I ju just described and populating this information in the resource catalog, which is the Link Smart Middleware Service. Um, the second one is the actual protocol translation from the device-specific protocols to the application higher-level protocol. Um, and the last one is um, access to the actual resources of the devices uh, using the, the protocol translation so that the application uh, can get access to the resources uh, modify the state and obtain the state. Um, there are several implementations of the device connectors. Um, some of them are more generic, the other are very um, system specific um, and we're working on building more of them. Um, the device gateway is one of the um, generic uh, device connectors which is um, intended to be used for um, integration of DIY electronics um, and rapid prototyping on the platforms like Raspberry Pi and a handful of um, sensor fish talking GPIO, SPI, I2C, and so on. Um, so using the device gateway, you can quickly integrate those devices and you can make them available in the network so that you can start building your application, accessing the data from them instead of hacking together the way to expose it over WebSockets and so on. Um, the OPC device connector um, is, um, is a device connector which provides, which implements the OPC UA protocol and allows to connect different industrial systems which are using this protocol. Um, so the integration of the devices um, with Link Smart Local Connect um, boils down to basically two points. The first one is you need to take an existing device connector or develop a new one um, and deploy it um, in the network. And in addition to that, you need to deploy the Link Smart Local Connect services um, so that the, the information from the device connector is populated in the resource catalog and the resource catalog is registered in the service catalog, uh, which is then used by the applications. Uh, by the clients. So the clients discover the resource catalog, um, and I get to this uh, on the next slides. So once they have a handful of the resource catalog API, they can query it um, for the information on specific devices or resources that they are looking for. Um, and based on this, the resource catalog um, provides them information about the endpoints, uh, which are the device connector um, API exposing the actual device and resources behind them. Uh, it can be um, HTTP URL, it can be MQTT topic uh, and the broker address where an application can get the sensor data stream. Um, and it also provides the information about the representation, uh, which means the payload formats in which the devices and resources are sending the, um, the data or accepting the, uh, the, the state which you want to modify, uh, which means that the LinkSmart is basically payload agnostic. Uh, you can use whatever format you like. Uh, but of course, there is there has to be an agreement between the device connector and the applications. Um, so once the the um, the client gets this information from the resource catalog, it basically has everything to directly um, query um, the specific um, endpoint from the device connector. Um, 
whether it is a, a HTTP uh, request or whether there's a subscription to the MQTT broker. Um, so the second part of the local connect um, is service discovery. Um, and there are two kinds of service discovery mechanisms that we have in local connect. The first one is the zero conf networking, um, which is basically um, bootstrapping um, a client application without knowing anything about the network infrastructure. Um, and with zero conf networking and DNSSZ as its implementation, the applications are able to discover the service catalog. Um, and the service catalog is a simple um, registry of services with a RESTful API. Uh, so once the application uh, discover the service catalog, um, they query for uh, for other middleware services or even application services. Um, so the service catalog, as I mentioned, is a registry. Um, it uses active registrations, um, which means that it's a soft state system where uh, services are assigned a TTL value, and if they are not, the registrations are not updated within a specific amount of time, those registrations expire. Um, so if the service goes down, then it disappears from the catalog, obviously. Um, the service catalog also provides automatic tunneling of um, individual services in the Global Connect network, uh, which is optional and configured in the service registration information. And um, this is basically where I'm going to on the next slide. Um, so now that we have um, an infrastructure in a local, in a private IP network, where I can build the application, um, we can deploy application services, we can connect the IoT devices, we can discover the services, we can discover the devices, can communicate with them. Um, the next step or the next use case are the applications which require communication beyond the scope of a single private network. Um, for example, our smart city applications or smart city platforms. Um, so for those applications, we have the Global Connect. Um, and as you can see on this um, example, we have four um, local connect environments um, which are connected together in the Global Connect overlay network. Um, and it provides three uh, basic um, functionalities. The first one is the overlay network, uh, which is the task of um, uh, building a virtual network on top of the internet to connect individual local connect environments. The second one is the service discovery, um, which is um, similar to what we do in the local connect with discovering services on the private network. Uh, with Global Connect, we discover services which are supposed to be discoverable outside of the local connect environment. Um, and I'll give an example on the next slide about this. Um, and then finally, service tunneling is once the application discover the service, um, the tunneling makes them um, capable of actually communicating with those services. Um, so the overlay network, uh, the idea of the overlay, overlay, overlay network, sorry, um, is that it builds um, a virtual network on top of the internet, which is like called the overlay. Um, and it connects the, the local connect environments in a single global network with virtual addresses and so on. Um, so what, what's specific to LinkSmart is that we use uh, interchangeable uh, backbones. The backbones is what we call the actual mechanisms, the, the bottom layer for creating the overlay network. They can use different architectures. They can be centralized. They can be decentralized, like peer-to-peer. -peer. They can be hybrid. Um, the service discovery um, is the way that the applications um, discover services from different local connect environments. Um, so in this example, we have the local connect, uh, we have a local connect B environment where there is a service and we have a local connect A environment where we have the application. Um, so every one of them, like the service B is um, deployed in local connect B. So local applications to local connect B can communicate with it um, using its IP network, um, discover it using the service catalog, um, and now we have an application in local connect A environment that wants to communicate with the service. Um, so using the global connect discovery, well, using the local connect discovery first, uh, we register it in the service catalog, which is the normal procedure so that the applications in local network can discover it. Now that we want to expose it, um, we configure this uh, registration information in there, setting the flag that this service needs to be exposed in the global connect. Um, so once this is done, uh, the border gateway of the local connect B network uh, picks this information from the service catalog. Uh, this information is traversed in the overlay network. It arrives at the uh, border gateway A uh, in the local connect A environment. Um, and there the border gateway puts in the local service catalog of the network A. Uh, and then the application is uh, able to discover it. So 
now that the application um, has information about the service, it wants to actually make the request. Uh, well, making the request is not that easy, of course, because there are firewalls, there are NATs uh, between local connect A environment and local connect B environment. And this is where the service tunneling um, comes into place. Um, so the, the service tunneling in, in Global Connect is basically providing um, access to remote services in local environment. Um, it is actually transparent to both application and the service uh, because the application uh, gets the endpoint of the actual service tunneled in its, its, in its local network. So it doesn't need additional configuration. Um, it can be aware that it communicates with a tunneled service, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and for the service, it's the same. Um, the border gateway uh, in the local Connect B environment, in this case, acts on behalf of the client making the requests as if it was a local application. Um, there are different protocols that are tunneled in this way. Uh, we call them the backbone protocols. Um, so at the moment, um, we tunnel HTTP services and we're working on tunneling MQTT um, as well, which basically provides you with um, a pop-up service which spans beyond the single local network. Um, yes, so now that we have um, the local connect where we integrate the devices, integrate the applications, um, and we have the global connect, which allows us to connect multiple local connect environments and build applications which scale beyond a single network, um, we have the infrastructure to, uh, to implement IoT applications. Um, and this is very nice, but there is still a lot of work that has to be done. Um, and this work is usually um, application specific. There is business logic, there is analytics, which are application specific. Um, but well, we believe and our experience says that there are some tasks uh, which are shared by applications. And this is why we provide the middleware services. Um, so one kind of these services are um, the services which are working with um, sensor data processing, including the sensor data fusion um, and sensor data aggregation. Um, then we, we want to store the historical data because most applications actually need to, um, to, give some, to, to, to persist the data, uh, to visualize it in some way, um, and to do analytics as well. They also need historical data store. Um, so this is where we have a uh, service providing this. Um, persistent of the sensor data and also allowing the user to define the retention policies so that the user can decide which data needs to be stored for how long um, and which data needs to be discarded. Um, then there is the management of the metadata. So I mentioned the resource catalog and service catalog um, services, which the first one provides um, basic metadata information about the de deployed IoT devices. The second one provides the information about the services. Uh, but then if if we want to build more sophisticated systems, we want to build more sophisticated applications that uh, need a higher level of abstraction that want to use, say, semantic web um, technologies to annotate the data so that it makes uh, it is discoverable so that they can m do more complex reasoning and so on. We need additional services that um, provide this kind of metadata management. Um, and this is also something we're working on. Um, and there are other services as well, which we hope to identify in the future and complement the library of the services following smart. Um, to get more information, you can start by going to the linksmart.eu, the main project website. Um, there are also the sub projects that I mentioned. Uh, the most interesting ones are probably the local connect and global connect. Um, we keep all the documentation of the wiki in trying to update it. Um, if you have um, any contributions um, on this, any suggestions how we can improve it, uh, we would be grateful to hear that. Um, so on this, I'd like to thank you for listening and watching. And till next time.